Hey guys, I'm Nick. I'm the owner of Navarre Kayak Fishing. I know two videos, two days in a row. That's crazy, but had a little downtime. James at Broxton Outdoors was nice enough to let us take home that Topwater 120 PDL yesterday. And we've had this for two days or so. And this is the 2020 Old Town Predator PDL. Um, they made a few changes. Now they didn't make any real changes to the hull design. It's gonna perform the same. It's still 13 foot, two inches long. Uh, weighs in at just under 120 pounds. Obviously, we own five to seven of these at any given time. We use them on all of our inshore and offshore kayak fishing charters, eco tours, rentals. Uh, it's a fantastic product. I am happy to see several of the changes. They are improvements, but what I really want to touch on, they improved this kayak and actually lowered the price point. It's probably the only thing that's going to make a difference to most folks. It's actually going to retail for $2,499 now compared to $2,800 in the past. Um, that's a pretty significant change. You know, they definitely added some stuff that probably costed them more money, but they found a way to give it to you at a better price. So that's awesome. It's cool to see. It's something that does not trend very well in the industry. Usually the price just keeps going up for plastic. Uh, to see the price come down a little bit with a few more features to an already great platform is pretty neat. Um, one of the design changes they made to the hull itself is the transducer. We're going to have a look at that right now. Here it is, guys. That's the universal fish finder transducer mount. Um, it's going to be awesome. In the past, it was a much smaller hole here, and they kind of forced you to use a Hummingbird product. Uh, Hummingbird makes a good product, but I prefer to use a Garmin, and I really don't like being forced to use something I don't want to use. So the fact that they made an open area where you can put a 7 to 9 inch transducer, which you can open the door to a bunch of different side scan units, uh, that's awesome. I like it a lot. I will definitely be installing a Garmin side scan on there for 2020, so that's awesome. Now let's look at something else. All right, guys, like the top water 120, we're gonna start at the back. We're gonna work our way forward. Uh, the first thing you notice, the difference between 19 and 2020 is this, this uh, rudder. It's actually a plastic material now. In the past, it was a metal or an aluminum, uh, which was super durable. Um, I have mixed feelings about it, but I don't see it really being a problem. It's gonna flex, so it's gonna absorb any kind of damage. It's not gonna bend. That's great. Um, it's still, you know, driven by lines, which means if you hit the sand or anything, it's gonna pop up naturally. So it's not gonna hurt itself. Uh, obviously you have the fear of it being plastic and hitting it from the rear and snapping something. But they put this handle on there. It's mounted pretty good. I actually carried it around by it. Um, it's kind of awkward because it kind of pulls up on the rubber band, but uh, it does a good job and I don't see it really being an issue. Uh, one of the things I am a fan about the rudder is they put a turnbuckle system here, which was needed for a long, long time. Uh, as you use the kayak more and more, these metal cables will stretch. Uh, we experience it every single year. Uh, this way, you will be able to take a pair of pliers and just tighten that down. It'll force the metal wire out longer and your you know, your tension will be back and good to go. There won't be any slop or play when you go out there on the water. That's super, super important. Uh, we're going to bring the camera in, take a closer look right here because they put something right there you guys are probably going to like. I'm not going to use it, but you will probably like it. All right, guys, 2020, they put a shallow water anchor ready mounting pad back here. So that's going to work great with your power pole micro. It does not come with the hardware, but this little orange sticker tells you exactly what you need. Uh, you can go over that super easy, pull these little plastic screws out to use it. Keep them in there if you're not going to replace them. It'll keep uh, any kind of water from corroding those brass inserts. All right. Um, this, this stuff is going to be cool for some people. Obviously, the spike will go right through this hole. You'll just set this up so it stays here at all times. Um, personally, I'm not going to use it. One of the biggest factors of this kayak itself that I like most is instant reverse. It's really the reason we started using it at the end of 2016, beginning of 2017. Uh, pretty much, the, pretty much the ultimate in maneuverability. Okay, that's what we want. That's what we need. So we use every single day on our inshore and offshore trips. Uh, power pole is a cool little addition to it. I personally don't think it is needed. Uh, but it is cool they put it there. It doesn't hurt anything. It makes it much easier. Before, it was kind of round back here. You kind of make some modifications, put adapters and plates. The fact that there's a flat surface here is pretty nice. Even if you wanted just to mount a flagpole back here or anything else, uh, it's cool to have that flat surface. Uh, from there forward, not too much different. We're going to pan the camera real quick over here. Right through here, you know, they have these replacement parts right here. In the past, you would buy a Yak Attack product, pull these screws out, put that in there. It's nice to see 
that the rails are already grooved out. Obviously nothing expensive, okay? An easy thing for them to do. It's gonna stop you from buying one accessory, okay? Which with a price point of 2,500, buying one less accessory compared to spending 28 and buying more stuff, it's pretty nice. You're saving 300 plus dollars just to get in the door. Obviously all your rail mounted accessories will just pop in here, slide and tighten down, whether it's, uh, oh goodness, there's a billion of them. Light pole, rod holders, the possibilities are endless, whatever you put on your kayak, all right? You still have the rear facing rod holders here. There's two of them like there's always been. Uh, there's no changes back here other than this clipping mechanism, which is irrelevant. From there, we'll just slide on forward, move the tripod and talk about the middle of the kayak. All right, guys, like every other every other kayak or every other predator that there's been, this is still gonna control your rudder all the way forward, puts it down, nothing to it. It's the same seat. I've been a big fan of it. Uh, Sometimes when you first sit in it brand new, it's not that comfortable, but I sit in it 40 plus hours a week, okay? So it definitely conforms to your body, all right? Actually, every year I sit in the new one, I hate the new seat because, well, it's not, it's not wrapped around me yet, all right? So once it breaks in, it's a fantastic seat. It's comfortable. I really do sit in it 40 hours a week. Uh, that's pretty absurd, but it's it's reality. Um, I love the underseat storage. One thing I don't like, and still the same thing is, there's no drains down there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my pocket knife and I'm gonna poke a hole in there. So if any water gets in there, um, it can drain out instantly. Same thing with sand or anything like that. It'll just drain out through the hole, land in the deck and then take care of itself. Uh, it's a pretty simple solution. Uh, I know it's nitpicking, but I do spend my life in here. Um, I like the storage in the back. It has drain holes back here. So you think they could put that drain hole in the bottom of that, no big deal. Small minor adjustment. Um, Underneath here, the same uh, same hatches here as before. This is cool. It gives you quick access to rigging, to install a fish finder, run wire, stuff like that. Uh, outside of that, I don't store anything in here on the water. It's going to be pretty much not practical to get in there. No really, no real need. Uh, if you're carrying that much stuff, I have no idea why um, you shouldn't. You don't need it. Um, just sits there like normal. You know, you still got your rubber band over here. I keep my paddle here, even though there's a paddle holder. I prefer it to be secured with the bungee. Not a big fan of the paddle holder. Uh, same layout right here. No big changes. It's nice. Looks good. Same seat adjustments. Now, we're going to pan over here a little bit. Boom, this guy right here. Now, I'm excited about this. If you watch any of our other YouTube videos, you'll know one of the things I always tell you is you need a forward-facing rod holder. Years past, I mount it right here, so it's over my left shoulder. The fact that they put a forward facing rod holder here is very, very nice. It's gonna be very convenient for myself, clients, uh, just general ease of use. A uh, big thing I always tell everybody is when you hook, land, net the fish, you can just open your bail and set your rod in the rod holder and that'll be right there. It faces forward right through here. It's very, very nice position. Um, I'm gonna mount the fish finder in this area so it'll work out well for me uh, right where I need it. I like it, big fan. Um, pan a little bit further forward they made a few changes up here now this lid has actually been on the ocean kayak malibu pedal um it was been on the top water pedal kayak since inception it's nice the old lid was a round hatch it it was prone to leaking okay every once in a while you get water in here uh, i realized that at the very end of 2016 and over the course of the last three years, I just legitimately never opened them and put anything in there. Uh, I tell the clients to stay away from it. It's not dry. Now, with this design, you just flip this, make a loud spring noise, whoop, opens up. There's a little groove here. That's a half inch of plastic. goes into a gasket. It's going to do a good job of keeping water out of there. Big fan of that. I liked it on the Malibu pedal, and I'm glad to see it on this. It's going to make my life a little bit easier. I personally probably won't store too much stuff in there because I don't carry that much stuff, even though we have clients every day. I keep it very, very simple. I go out with the intended tackle when I stick to the game plan. Um, probably just end up dumping some trash in here, uh, stuff like that. But I definitely am happy with it in case I need to put something in there that I want to keep safe. I know it won't go anywhere. So that's a nice new feature. Easy to go back to. Uh, it changed this out. It used to be a hard handle. Now it's the rubber handle. Uh, not going to affect the performance of the kayak, so I personally do not give a crap. Um, same thing here with these grooves. They put the same routed out plates up here, so you can just put whatever accessories you want to. If you've watched any of our videos, I always put a 
a net right here, a paddle holder. It holds my net across the front of the kayak. Uh, so yeah, it makes it easy. One less hole I got to drill. Just plug and play and I'm good to go. Uh, we're going to move that tripod one more time here in a second. I'm going to give you a look at some marine mat or sea deck they put in the bottom. So come on over here. So you can see they have the mat in here. It's going to be cool. You know, I imagine it'll keep your feet cooler if you go barefoot. I personally like to keep a pair of shoes on uh, just to avoid hooks and stuff like that. Dropping pliers. Yeah, it makes noise. Um, I do this every day. It's a great marketing thing to tell you that that doesn't, it's going to help not spook the fish. But in reality, I drop stuff in the bottom of the kayak all the time. The fish do not seem to care. But it is a cool feature. Uh, I'm sure it'll have some kind of benefit to it. Uh, I don't want it to peel up or anything. So for me, it's one more thing that could possibly go wrong. Uh, but it is cool they included in the price. Worst thing's worse is it messes up and you pull it out. Uh, previous years, there have been a bunch of grooves underneath these things that people have uh, kind of complained about. So maybe the grooves are still there to provide stability and the decking actually covers it up, which is cool. So um, I like it. I'm not upset about it. It's there. It's not going to hurt anything. You don't have to pay anything for it. And the kayak is cheaper. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, we're going to move the tripod for what looks to be one last time. Have a look at that new front hatch. Well, here it is, the last and final change. I don't think I missed anything else. Um, at first, when I saw this front hatch in the bungee system, I was like, man, I like my lock, okay? I like my little latch that's been there for three years. Obviously, once you use something every day, you're not a real big fan of change. So when I first saw it, I was like, man, that's silly, all right? Nothing to it, I don't like it. But uh, the more I've tinkered with it over the last two days or so, uh, it makes no difference, realistically, in the big scheme of things. I don't really get in here for anything. Uh, I keep a hard life jacket in here with a whistle at all times in every one of our kayaks to include our inflatables, but this is an extra one to have in case we need to pull it out and throw it to someone. Outside of that, I keep a spare prop in here, and I actually I keep that spare prop attached to this line. I just tie it around there so it never can go anywhere. Uh, we spend a lot of time on the water, so having a backup prop is pretty important. Great place to keep it. I don't go in there. Um, I do keep a battery in this battery bag, but the only time I get in there is to pull it out and plug it in and charge it the night before an offshore trip, which is well, probably once a day. But I don't get in there while I'm on the water. Uh, sometimes in the wintertime, I'll put a rain jacket in there. Uh, but outside of that, I don't spend much time in there. I'm not going to be leaning over the front end, getting in there all the time. Um, if I fish myself, I put a fish bag there. So I'm not going to be getting in there. So the idea of there being a bungee to mess with or this, people will be like, oh, it'll fall off there. It didn't really go anywhere, okay? Um, I don't have any concerns about that. It doesn't matter which direction you put it on. It'll go back on there perfectly so it can flop around and do whatever it wants to do. Um, actually, the bungee system is pretty darn easy to use. So I'm pretty sure you can do it one-handed all day long without much, you know, getting used to. Uh, at first, I was like, man, I don't like it, but can you do it one-handed? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can do it one-handed. Maybe, maybe. There it is. Uh, so, I don't see it as a big deal. I think it's more along the lines of people don't like change. Like myself, I don't like change either, okay? Like, I, I'm, I'm hating on the rudder system being plastic, but in reality, uh, I don't see it being a problem. Even if it is, uh, one of the main reasons we use Old Towns, a uh, very large reason anyways, is... The warranty is unbelievable. This thing, when they first released it, was two years. Now it's five years, okay? Obviously, they're not worried about it breaking. That's a great selling point for a consumer. Obviously, we are a Old Town rental dealer, so we order them directly, and our warranty stuff's a little different. But as a regular consumer, if you go into Brox and Outdoors and you buy this, you have a five-year warranty here. The company's not going to give you a five-year warranty if they're worried about it breaking. That's awesome to see. The boat itself has a lifetime manufactured defect warranty, so you can't stab it with a piece of rebar and get a new one, okay? But if something cracks, it's not supposed to. I mean, there are pieces of plastic that can't be perfect, okay? I don't know a whole lot of people have had anything bad happen to them, but the fact that if it does, they're going to replace it. And there aren't a lot of companies that can say that about the whole system. That's cool. It's one of the reasons we use them. Uh, and overall, 2020, I'm pretty happy, you know? I, I'll tell you this, I'm probably going to fish from 2019 for the next two months just because it is offshore season uh, and my current 2019 is already rigged up with the fish finder and to be blunt, it is filthy. Uh, every day, king mackerel, red snapper, 
cut bonita, cigar minnows, just giant messes, gaff and cobia, uh, just blood. I pressure wash it daily. You just can't keep it clean. Uh, this thing is gorgeous. We'll probably just break it out in the fall and uh, use it for the fall, get it all rigged up for next year, take a bunch of pictures of gorgeous redfish all winter. Uh, but fantastic kayak performance wise, you know, everything's the same, not much different, just all cosmetic stuff, all upgrades to make your life as an angler easier. Still gonna pedal great, still gonna have unbelievable stability. Uh, maneuverability will be the same. The rudder's the same size, it's just not metal. Um, but hey, that means it won't fade. The metal one's faded, so that one will just be plastic and black forever. Uh, overall, yeah, I'm impressed. I'm happy with the changes and the price point is fantastic. 2,500 bucks for everything you're getting uh yeah that's that's really that's really darn good so if you guys have any questions leave them in the comment section uh if you want to see our up-to-date daily photos of fish pictures just go to our facebook page it's easy to find it's just called navar kayak fishing and as always i look forward to you guys booking your next adventure